This video is a journey down one of the oldest streets in Glasgow, the Tron Gate. But first, a little bit of history. For most of its history, Glasgow was a small place, pretty much just one long thin street. The street starts at the top, near the cathedral. It then wandered down to the bridge and fords over the river. There were a few short streets crossing it. The longest and most important was the Tron Gate. The Tron Gate was important for several reasons. One was having a market cross at one end, which is where the market was held. The cross is a modern copy, as the original was removed in the 17th century. To give an idea of how important the market was, you had to get a charter from the king to hold one. The market indirectly gave the street its name, as a tron is a big weighing beam, which the market traders could use to check the weight of the goods. The gate part of the name isn't because there was one at the end, but from the old Scottish word gate, meaning the way to. History lesson over, and now for some photographs and video clips where there will be more history when talking about the things you will see. Standing at the cross looking down Tron Gate, one thing you can't miss is the big clock tower on the right. This is a toll booth steeple. The rest of the building was demolished in the 1920s. The original plan was to have the other side of the road the same, with a curved section at the corner, without a tower I expect, to create an impressive entrance to the Tron Gate and Argyll Street beyond. That never happened, and instead it looks like this. A quick explanation about toll booths in Scotland. The word in this case is not used to denote a place where you pay to use a road, but it's actually the main administrative building for the town. The building housed the council offices, council chamber, court and prison. Everything you need to run the town in one place. The toll booth is another reason why the Tron Gate was so important because it was where they ran the city from. As you look in the middle of the street, there is a raised island with a metal grating over it. This is where Glasgow Cross Railway Station was. The original was a very odd looking octagonal building. This was demolished in 1923 and replaced by a much more ordinary building. This closed in 1964 and was demolished in 1977. You may have noticed in the background of the video, a lot of the shops have artworks on the front instead of empty or boarded up windows. This is a great way of making empty shops look more interesting. The low level railway here was constructed by the cut and fill method. To do that, you dig a huge deep trench along the road, build a railway in it, brick over the top to create a tunnel, backfill the remaining hole and rebuild the road which must have been a nuisance for everyone living in the area while that was going on. Looking down the Tron Gate, the thing most likely to grab your attention is what looks like a pink church tower. This is a Tron steeple. This was added to a medieval church in 1628 and survived the church burning down in 1793. A new church was built next to it, but separate from it. For a long time, this was the main church for the ordinary citizens of Glasgow, rather than the cathedral. The church is now the Tron Theatre. I can't help but wonder what the good Calvinist folk that used the church in the past would make of it being turned into the den of iniquity and sin that is a theatre. You may also have noticed a rather large cherub in a niche in the corner of the theatre. This and the wall beside it actually hide a ventilation shaft. On the other side of the steeple is a statue of St Mungo, Glasgow's patron saint. What isn't so obvious is that it's a kinetic sculpture that is supposed to activate on the hour. I haven't seen that so I can't confirm it and I have heard tales of power cuts causing it to get out of sync. 
You will also notice on the other side of the road what looks like a castle sitting on the shops. I first noticed this as I was walking along Gallagate one day when the sun came out and shone on a building and I suddenly saw a white castle standing amongst the offices and shops as if it had been picked out by a spotlight. This odd looking building was built in 1854-55 to by the city of Glasgow Bank as offices and warehousing. The architect was John Thomas Rockhead who also designed the Wallace Monument at Stirling so you can see where the ideas for the building came from. Back to history for a second to illustrate how narrow Glasgow was. I came across a story about how there was a big fire which was blamed on the candle makers who were forced to move out of town to candle rigs. As you can see it's not far, it's almost a literal stone's throw from the cross. I'm not sure if the story is true but it gives an idea of how people thought about distances and how small the place was. Across the road from candle rigs there is a tall thin red sandstone building, old but not remarkable. It's only when you enter the door to 103 Trongate that you realise there is something special. It's much bigger than you expect and modern. You'll also see signs for galleries, projects and a kinetic theatre. The modest facade hides something that started out as an arts collective and now has turned into an amazing art space by joining up all the individual surrounding buildings to make a greater whole. Inside, you can also see it used to be a warehouse, with a wide open space created by thin iron columns holding up the roof, which makes it great for gallery spaces. The Panoptican. This claims to be the oldest surviving music hall in the world. During that time, it had a lot to happen. This was one of the first buildings in Glasgow to have electricity installed, and with it, electric lights. It had a carnival and waxworks in the attic and a zoo in the basement. It was also the place where Stan Laurel started his career. It eventually closed and it became a tailor shop with a workshop above it. One oddity occurred during the Second World War when the auditorium was used for farming chickens. The theatre part of the building was largely forgotten until the start of this century when it was rediscovered and a trust set up to restore it. They have got it up and working, and you can now go in to see shows again, but it still needs a lot of work. Hopefully, they will get it back to its former glory in time. Along the side of the Panoptican is an alleyway called the New Wind. Despite the name, it's a very old street, being a medieval alleyway. Now it's pretty much just a dull, empty path from the Tron Gate to the car parks behind it. However, there are a couple of things that make it a bit special. One is that it is here where you enter the Panoptigan, and the other is a mural of a spaceman at its entrance. If you look across the road from the New Wind, all you will see is open space. That is because they have been demolishing everything and ready for a new development. One plan for the redevelopment has already fallen through. The current plan is for flats, student accommodation and a hotel with shops on the ground floor. We will have to wait and see if this ever happens. Back across the road there is a rather dilapidated building, apparently held together by scaffolding poles. But if you look closely, you'll see some traces of a rather more glamorous past. You will see some carving in the stone and the remains of stained glass windows, all in the Art Deco style. When it first opened in 1935, it was the Peacock Tea Room, which was a very stylish place, but now is living on borrowed time. It has been listed for demolition a few times and could disappear at any time. Just along from this, you will see an arch with 1993 carved onto it. This is misleading because it's the entrance to the old wind, another old alleyway. The gate in the Tron Gate was here at one time. The gatehouse position varied through time, probably moving further west as the street extended in that direction. The last gate was where the street ends now, at Stockwell Street. 
Once you reach Stockwell Street with the pedestrian precinct across the road marking the eastern end of Argyle Street, if you cross the road and turn round to look back down the Tron Gate, you will see two imposing buildings guarding the end. A large solid looking stone building on the left, which it should come as no surprise to learn was built as a bank. After the bank closed the branch there, the building was empty for a while. Now the ground floor is a coffee shop and the upper floors are apartments. Across the road is a large red sandstone building which was originally a warehouse and shops but is now offices and shops. It was built in 1923 to 29. It looks fairly plain but does have a dome in the corner adding a nice touch of style. Doing this video made me realise how this street has changed in recent times. There are lots of mentions of buildings being warehouses, which must have made the place very busy with vehicles collecting and delivering goods. Now they have all changed into offices, art spaces or flats, making it busy in a different way. There is one thing that hasn't changed through most of the street's long history, it is still busy with shoppers.